You know, back in the day as fans of the NHL, we relied on players like this gentleman to solidify uh, teams that needed a scoring prowess, teams that needed a, a new opportunity to make the playoffs. And every team he played with, he improved their squad. But it was kind of bizarre. He was so much in demand, ladies and gentlemen. He had kind of a Matt Stair style career. He played for nine teams in the NHL, four minor professional teams, uh, a very strong junior squad before he turned pro, and Team Canada in 77, who was part of that, what I call that return franchise of our national program after the Father Bauer years. Of course, we're going to talk about the very talented and a very, very genial individual, Walt McKechnie. Now, Walt McKechnie, born in London, Ontario, uh, Canada, uh, was a 6'2", 195-pound center. Now, he was originally drafted 6th overall by the Leafs as one of their 16-year-old players. He's one of the few of his era to really uh, make a mark for himself. He moved on after being drafted to the London Nationals of the WOHL and had a very, very successful uh, two years with the franchise. He averaged close to a point a game in two seasons, even though his second campaign was rife with penalty minutes. He was averaging about 2.5 to 3 a game. In 68, he eventually found himself with the Phoenix uh, Roadrunners. And with the Roadrunners, he had his, uh, his uh, scoring prowess return with 24, goal games, uh, 24 goals in a regular season. Now, he did, a call, he did get a call up to the Minnesota North Stars, uh, who acquired him uh, from, the, uh, from the Leafs. Now, he was the league's rookie of the year in the WHL for Phoenix. Uh, now, for the next three years, he split his time between the North Stars and their minor league affiliates. Now, uh, his best year with Minnesota was 69, where he had 14 points in 58 games. Now, 1970, uh, he found himself pretty well heavily in the minors again. 17 uh, goals with the I Iowa Stars, their affiliate in the CHL. Now, here it comes very unique, ladies and gentlemen. Just remember this team. He played with the Cleveland Barons in 1971. Keep this in mind. We'll get to it in a second. He had 47 points in 35 games. Now, he was eventually passed on to the California Golden Seals. Uh, and uh, he uh, and received a lot more ice time with the Seals than he had with, uh, with the Stars because with the Stars, he was mostly a third or fourth line. Now, he had 23 goals and 52 points in the 74 season. Now, in June 1974, he was involved... Uh, uh, in a very, very strange three-way trade that used the interleague draft. He, when he was claimed by the Rangers, sent to the Bruins for Derek Sanderson. Hey, that's quite a trade. He, now, he struggled with the Bruins, unfortunately, and was dealt mid-season Detroit Red Wings. The next year, Detroit, he put up what would be his NHL career-high numbers with 26 goals and 82 points and led the team in scoring. Now, he followed that with a 25-goal campaign in 77, and after the season, again, he was part of that tremendous 1977 Team Canada squad uh, that got fourth place at the World Championships despite a big victory over Czechoslovakia. I think it was 8-2 to two in the last contest, which has been talked about because we should have won silver that year, but because of the tiebreaker, Sweden got our medal. Now, before the next season, McKechnie was traded to the Capitals. Now, he got off to a poor start in Washington and then was traded to uh -huh, the Cleveland Bears, the former... Uh, the uh, the former squad, but in Cleveland, the NHL Cleveland Barons in December '77. Now he later became property of the Minnesota North Stars when the Barons and North Stars franchises were merged following the '78 season. He was then traded to the Maple Leafs prior to the '78-'79 season, and that was their semifinal run against Montreal that year, where he scored uh, 25 goals. Now his goal production dropped the next year, but Pekeke was then traded again to the Colorado Rockies where he continued to struggle. Now, he was signed as a free agent by the Red Wings in 81 and rebounded with a 16-goal season, followed by 14 goals in 83. Now, he spent the 84 season in CHO with the Salt Lake Golden Eagles and then retired at age 37. Now, in the 955 career NHL games, he scored 214 goals and had 392 assists for 606 points. Now, um... When he got to start with the uh, the Ontario uh, Hockey Association London Nationals in the mid-60s, he was a regular of something called the Strand Billiards in London. 
Now, the pool hall uh, owned by the late Len Box since the first opened 52 and closed September 2005 was considered like a second home to McKechnie. He referred to the Strand as the Academy, where he drew his competitive nature in many, many ways and later paid off because 8609, he owned and operated McKex, a family-style restaurant on Highland Street in Halliburton, Ontario, and he applied his love of community and love of, uh, you know, uh, uh, hockey and different sports towards the the restaurant. And it was a great success. I heard their uh, hamburger platter was quite good, actually. Now, he has retired from that business, of course, but the restaurant still operates under the same name. And uh, in a very deserving induction, he was put in the London Sports Hall of Fame, not London, England, of course, uh, London, uh, Ontario Sports Hall of Fame. Now, most recently, in a recent, like I said, in recent years, uh, his efforts are directed at fundraising for Prostate Cancer Canada, a charity close uh, to his heart, of course. Now, the World Championship record, 10 games, it was a different format that uh, that year. He had seven points, uh, only one goal, but 28 minutes in penalties. Ladies and gentlemen, I watched the 77 Team Canada games, and every five minutes, you would see the whatever announcer there was, Pinicio, McKechnie, McKechnie penalty, two minutes. So we saw more of him in the penalty box than the ice in certain situations. But what really stands out for me, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have to remember, this is a shock, by the way, he never played in the playoffs for a decade. He got to the playoffs in 68 Minnesota with five points, because, but because the teams he was playing with were so, uh, you know, out of the running. Detroit, Colorado, you know, California, Washington, Cleveland. When he got to Toronto, ladies and gentlemen, making the playoffs in 79 uh, kind of expanded on where he, uh, uh, where he could, uh, could do in his next, uh, uh, you know, uh, season. But uh, he was lucky. He got past the first round, played uh, the Habs in the second round. But he was very successful. He had four goals and three assists. So he impressed a lot of fans of the Habs and the Leafs in that combination of the preliminary victory for Toronto and in the um, the playoffs against uh, Montreal. And literally at the time, Toronto was a top four, top five team. And having McKechnie on that, you know, second or third line, you know, it gave uh, more than just Settler and Thompson and McDonald and Turnbull. It gave them, uh, and, you know, Settlebauer, who was scoring a lot of goals. But Toronto's numbers... Unfortunately, the second season, I think, the bloom was off, and, you know, that's why Toronto got rid of him. But Toronto uh, traded uh, traded other players away to make room for McKechnie. And, ladies and gentlemen, I hope the, uh, you know I'm not joking, it didn't pay off. They were expecting 35 goals, he only got 25. So, I mean, you know how it works in the media in Toronto. So, that's the story about Wild McKechnie. Now, I know, I know 17 years in the pros is a lot. But ladies and gentlemen, when you're playing with 15 high-level teams, it's good to know that the majority of uh, his teams, he kept his same number. And if I'm not mistaken, it was number 11. I could be wrong. But to, to me, uh, that was a number. And anybody wants to correct me, that's fine, because Walt McKechnie is, uh, is, it makes a smile for a lot of people because he was the best on the worst. Some of the worst NHL teams of the 1970s, he was the best player which is basically saying the best figure skater in Poland. Or even, well, there might be some good figure skaters in Poland. Anyway, I'll take that back. Best figure skater in Tahiti. How's that sound? Have a nice day. Bye.